Hello, welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday. I think we're live. Hopefully that's all worked. Um, well, if you've been here before, you know how it works. If it's your first time, welcome in any case. Glad you've joined us. Um, so I'm here every Wednesday from four o'clock for about half an hour, up to half an hour, depending on how we get on, whether you've got uh, any or many questions, etc. So before I do anything else, I just want to draw your attention to the chat box, which should be on the right hand side of your screen. So I'm just going to type a little hello. Um, there you go. So hopefully you'll see that on the right hand side and you can type your questions in there. Um, and I'll keep my eye on any questions as they come up. So um, do get in touch. It'll be really nice to, to actually hear from you. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit of a risk now because I hope there are actually people watching live. Um, and I'm going to ask you to tell me what the emotional temperature is that you're feeling at the moment. So how are you feeling? Um, and get the, the emotional temperature of the room, so to speak. So we might have to come back to this later when there's a few more viewers, but let's give this a go. We'll get it started. So I'm just going to um, very quickly quickly share the screen so that you can see how to join in. Um, okay, so here we go. You should now be able to see this. So you can join by text if you're in the UK by texting Frederica Rob 992 to 07480 781 235. Or of course, if you are online, which hopefully you are as you're watching on a computer or a phone, you can actually go to pollev.com and then enter Frederica Rob 992. So that's pollev.com, Frederica Rob 992 and you can actually join in on the poll with that. Um, so I'm going to hope that some responses come in. Uh, you can type words in there, you can put emojis in there. Let me know how you're feeling right now. Let's take the emotional temperature of the room. These are, um, I'm not going to say unprecedented times, it's been said too much, but these are certainly unusual times at the moment and our emotions can be a bit all over the place and that's okay. So um, let me know how you're feeling right now by entering a, a word or more you can do more than one word or emoji to let me know how you're feeling I'm going to see if I can now um, share a different screen and see if any results are coming in um, okay let's have a look so no responses just yet but hopefully we'll start getting some responses shortly so I'll come back to this in a bit and I'll give you a reminder again if you'd like to put your emotional temperature um, so how are you feeling right now and you should be able to see even at the top of your screen there uh, how to actually join in by putting your responses in so I'm now going to um, share a little presentation with you um, so that we can carry on. Okay, right. So this is me, very briefly. Who am I? Why am I sitting here talking to you? So I'm Frederica Roberts. Um, I um, have the lovely designation of MAP, which stands for Masters in Applied Positive Psychology, which I got last year from Anglia Ruskin University. And I'm doing a doctorate in education at the moment, uh, focusing, hopefully, my research on whole school positive education. Um, I have written a few books, um, Recipe for Happiness back in 2013, which was a generic uh, book about well-being, but then specifically for the education sector, Character Toolkit for Teachers, which I co-wrote with Elizabeth Wright, which was published in 2013. 18 and I have to think about that one and then for flourishing sake which is coming out this summer in August although I've had very exciting news today that uh, my endorsers or at least one of my endorsers Adrian Bethune has received his complimentary copy in the post today as a thank you for his endorsement so I'm very very excited that actually there are some real life copies of the book out there I haven't got any yet but I'm really excited about that so that's coming out in June but it is available to pre order and um, you can get that from Amazon or from JKP Jessica, Jessica Kingsley publishers already um, and uh, I work as um, myself as the happiness speaker I speak and train in schools primarily but not only and I also um, am the founder and managing director of Educate to Flourish who are bringing you the this live stream today um, so Wellbeing Wednesday is all about um, simple well-being activities that we can put into our lives you can use 
use them for yourself if you're a teacher or if you're a parent and of course you can use them with either your own children or the children that you teach and uh, each week I'm going to bring you uh, a little activity that you can do that's going to help you look after your well-being at this particularly um, unusual time that we're going through and of course at any time. And I'll also, towards the end of uh, today's session, we'll be sharing um, some resources that I've um, come across or that people have shared with me. Um, so if you do have resources that you would like me to share with you, um, do please let me know and I'll share, um, I'll let you know how to get in touch with me at the end of uh, this presentation. Um, so do let me know any resources that you're finding that are going to help other people with their well-being because I love to be able to share them here. Um, so I'm just going to make sure, just see if we've got any messages at all. Um, okay, no, that's the wrong bit I'm looking at. Never mind. Hopefully the messages will be coming through on this uh, screen. I'm just going to have a very quick look to see if there's any responses. Oh, we've got some responses to the emotional temperature. So let's have a look at those. Um, we've got a tired person and a happy person. Do you know, I think we're all a little bit tired at the moment, aren't we? It's it's quite exhausting. We're going through so much change and so much adjustment. And I think there is a certain amount of grieving going on for the life that we knew, uncertainty about what's going to come next and what's happening right now. And for so many of us, um, actually very busy, even though we're at home. Because um, if we're self-employed, then we're having to do lots and lots of work to keep things going. Um, and if you're a teacher, you're probably busy still doing some teaching in schools if, if your school is open to, to children of key workers, for example. Um, and you might be very busy at home delivering lessons virtually or preparing resources and materials and looking out for resources to share with parents. So it's a very busy time. And I'm speaking to a lot of people who are saying that they're very tired at the moment so I'm, I'm with you I'm, I, I get that I'm really tired too and happy that's really good to hear um, strangely a lot of people are really happy as well and that includes me at the moment because although it's it's a worrying time and a scary time and we're going through a process of loss and grief and and uh, and to some extent trauma we're also going through a period where we are getting the opportunity to spend time with certain people, not all the people we'd like to have around us, but uh, with a lot of people and we get to make an extra effort to connect with people um, via phone, etc., cetera, and, and means like this, Zoom, chat, Skype and WhatsApp and so on. And so in a way, actually, we're, we're connecting to the things that are important and, and you know, making time to look after our well-being, etc. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, there's somebody out there that's happy as well, because I'm quite happy too at the moment. Um, so I'll keep checking in on this. If at any time we get any more responses, remember that uh, to do that, you can simply go to pollev.com and then... Um, put the poll ID number in, which is Frederica Rob 992 really easy to remember, <laughs> and uh, just put an emoji or a word in there. Okay, so I'll take you back to the slides now. So we've done uh, the introductions, and I thought today I might start in the way that I started um, back in February as well, when I taught for two days on the Masters of Applied Positive Psychology that um, I did myself um, recently. And I taught on the Positive Education module, which was an incredible honour um, and a very high calibre of students in that module. It was fantastic. And I started, I did the emotional temperature with them, and I also um, talked about our signature strengths. So I'm going to say a little bit more about what the strengths are and how you can find out yours, but I'm just going to start off by saying um, my top signature strength, actually, um, according to the VIA Institute uh, for, for Character... <laughs> my brain's gone. <laughs> um, the VIA Character Institute, um, which is VIA stands for Values in Action. Um, you have five signature strengths. They're your strongest ones, but all of us have 24 in general, that uh, it doesn't matter where you grew up, where you live, how old you are, etc. And 
so we have these 24 strengths and then we have five that are our, our signature ones, our strongest ones. And my absolute strongest one is love. And that's certainly seeing me through now. The love for my family. I've got my youngest daughter at home and my husband here at home with me. So I'm getting to spend wonderful time with them. It's quite painful that our eldest daughter is not here. She's working and uh, lives away from home. Um, so that love is painful as well. But it's wonderful that we're speaking to her um, by video chat every day and uh, we're having a Sunday dinner every Sunday evening with her where she joins us via Zoom and that's lovely and we've had some really great chats uh, with my mom and with my mother-in-law and with my sister and her kids and, and both we, we join in but my daughter joins in who lives away as well so that, that strength of love is really guiding me at the moment and helping me make a lot of decisions about how to use my time and and the relationships and the people in my life are the things that take precedence. And um, I'm really enjoying that part of the lockdown. So that's great. Um, so I want you to think about what your key strengths are. And here's something to help you. Um, so these are the 24 character strengths by the VIA Institute on Character. And you can see the website there at the bottom, viacharacter.org. Um, it's a fantastic website. It's got loads of research links on there. You can do a free um, test to see what your top strengths are your top five and you'll see all of the 24 strengths in order in terms of how you display them you can do it as often as you want as well um, and there's lots of information about each of the strengths so have a look and uh, why not do the the free inventory if you haven't done it already or even if you have and uh, see what your key strengths are and how they're helping you right now that's a really useful thing to do particularly when you're going through a difficult time tapping into your strengths and how they can help you and by all means um, if you know what your signature strengths are or you think um, you have a fair idea then type into the comments box on the right of the screen and let me know and again I'll put my contact details at the end of this session and uh, you'll be able to share with me if you want drop me an email or tweet me and uh, let me know what your signature strengths are. So I said I was going to share a specific activity um, today. So um, I'm just going to come back to you for a moment and um, I'm going to introduce what this activity is today's tip. And uh, it's an activity called mindful photography. And it's about really tapping into mindfulness um, by being present in the moment and really taking it in. Um, at the moment, there is lots that can be scary around us and I don't know about you, but when I start to think too much about what might happen tomorrow or next week or next month, I start to get quite agitated and quite worried. So mindfulness is really useful in that sense to just focus on right now, right now, what's good, what's happening, what am I feeling? And, you know, right now I'm sitting safely in my home. I'm talking to you. I'm happy. I'm relaxed. Um, I have food in the fridge. Toilet roll. <laughs> plenty of toilet roll <laughs> um, and uh, we, we're, we're fine at the moment that the entire family is healthy right now and worrying about what might happen tomorrow or in a few days time is not going to help me right now so that moment of mindfulness is about thinking what's happening right now and you can capitalize on that through photography and mindful photography is a fantastic activity to do because it, it's, it's a way of stopping and taking in a moment. So if you are in a country where, like in the UK, where I live, you are allowed to go for daily walks or daily bike rides or daily jogs, then it could be a great opportunity to do some mindful photography while you're out. But even if you're not allowed to go out, there are things you can do around your home. You can photograph food that you're eating and enjoying. You can photograph your pet. You can photograph some of your favorite books in the house or just moments that are happening in your home. And all of those things allow you to kind of tap into that mindfulness. So I'm going to share with you some of the photographs I've taken on uh, my recent walks. And then we'll talk a little bit more about um, the benefits of mindful photography as well. So I'm just going to go back to the slides and I'll just fast forward to the next one. So hopefully... Here we go. So this is just on the high street near me. It's really not a very nice street. I must say it's a fairly busy street, lots of traffic at normal times, a bit less traffic right now. But still, I, even when I'm out with my headphones on my own walking, I can still hear the whoosh, whoosh of cars driving by. And um, 
but what's really interesting is that with the with the spring having erupted um you can see some really nice colors and different things and and i took this particular photo because i was out quite late and um you know it was something like half past six seven o'clock in the evening and so the light was very different to when I've been going walking uh, in the middle of the day. And it was fascinating to actually see the light glimmering and shimmering through the clouds and the way that it was catching the leaves. And it was just a different light. And I particularly loved that. So that's why I took that photo. Um, and now when I look at that, it just reminds me. And then this one, oh, this is, I love that photo, but this is actually my favorite favorite bit of one of the walks that I do uh, there's an old quarry near us uh, where I go walking and I really all these years I've lived in this house for 21 years or so and I've lived in this area for nearly 23 years and the quarry was somewhere that my kids used to go and play but I didn't really explore it that much I went a few times back in the day when I had dogs but that's it and um Actually, the, the old quarry is just one part of it, and it's just a big green area. But off it, there are lots and lots of different paths that you can walk on, shorter ones, longer ones, and you can crisscross from one path to the next. So uh, what I've been doing both on my own and, and with my daughter and sometimes my husband is when we go out there is we explore different ways of walking the routes to make them longer, to make them more interesting. And again, I really enjoy exploring the routes at different times of day and seeing how the light is different. And this, this is one of my favorite places on the walk um, when you approach this particular I call it the tree tunnel from this direction on on one of the paths it's just one of the most stunning views the way that the field just peeks out at you in the distance I love it and it makes me feel really happy every time I walk there so I'm so glad I've captured this photo and I've taken that same photo in different lights on different days at different times of day as well because I absolutely love it so I hope you're enjoying it too and then my final photo I'm going to share with you there's my husband and my youngest daughter Hannah Simon and Hannah um, so back to that strength of love and this was just a beautiful moment um, with us all being here and Hannah being at home rather than at university um, she's been doing lots of stuff at the moment she's upstairs she's painting her bedroom she's redecorating it uh, getting rid of all the Dalmatians Dalmatian paw prints I put on when I was pregnant with her I think she's 20 it's about time that she redecorated um, so this is an opportunity and she'll have a few months to enjoy her room before she goes back to uni um, so she's had lots and lots of dad and daughter bonding time as, as Simon's been teaching her how to how to paint how to decorate how to do it all and then um, she had a, a puncture in one of her bike tires and the other day so Simon showed her and helped her repair the puncture and then they were just pumping the tires back up and as I came out into the garden and I saw this moment it just felt really lovely to see this moment of the two of them together so I wanted to capture it um, so there you go mindful photography in action um, right there so I'm going to come back to you now and uh, in a moment I'm going to share some resources but I just wanted to give you the opportunity of course if you've got any questions um, type them into the chat box and uh, I'll be able to respond to your questions so remember on the right of your screen as you're watching this you've got the opportunity to type any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. It can be about mindful photography or it can be about anything else. And actually, I've realized I wanted to share with you um, some of the benefits of mindful photography in terms of the science. So I'm just going to come back to the. Um, where is it? Here we go to the slideshow. And uh, go to the next one. And here's some of the science. So there's there's some references in there that I'm going to put into the description of this video when the replay goes out on YouTube. All the videos from the lives that I do on Wellbeing Wednesday are all um, there available for you to watch at any time. So in the description for the video, I'll put the information about the research that I've referenced. But basically, um, the mindful photography taps into a few things. One of them is about putting effort into what uh, Lubomirsky and other Others call um, intentional activity, uh, sorry, putting effort into what they call intentional activity. So this uh, comes back to something that's that's been a little bit controversial at times, but uh, Sonia Lubomirsky and her colleagues came up with this pie chart um, showing that basically 50% of the what makes up the difference between uh, people's natural happiness levels, 50% um, of it is genetic, and then um, 
only 10% is down to circumstances. So what we're going through at the moment, for example, would have an impact into the difference between one person's well happiness and another person's happiness. And then 40% is uh, the intentional activities. Now, she has since explained that perhaps those figures are, are quite flexible. And also it was a bit misunderstood that it's not about what's your individual happiness, but it's the differences between people's happiness. But what does still stand despite the controversy about that research and, and how people have interpreted and reported on that is that we can make a difference to our happiness by putting effort into intentional activities and making the effort to notice moments notice beautiful sights and and capture those by mindfully taking photographs is a really good way to do one of those intentional activities to improve our happiness so that's where that comes into it um, there's also research showing that um when we take photos mindfully, we can then, of course, use them later to reminisce, which I was doing with you as I was telling you about those photos. And hopefully it showed, I, I think I could feel already the joy of those moments that I photographed and captured. And hopefully that came across. So reminiscing can improve your mood. And also you can use it to enhance your, your sense of taking perspective and looking at things from a different perspective. Um, so it can also enhance savoring of the present moment. Um, so as well as as that mindfulness of the present moment it's also the savoring in the moment um, where you're really immersing yourself in it and enjoying it and I found that really interesting because quite often we think that stopping to take photographs can perhaps stop us enjoying the moment but if it's just one photograph and then we just take the rest of the time to enjoy that moment it can actually enhance that savoring and really immerse us into that moment even further um, than by just living it at the time so mindful photography can help with that and uh, again it can improve mood and appreciation and motivation in a similar way to counting one's blessings so you know that the idea of gratitude and counting your blessings and looking at what's good in your life which of course is a very well researched um, area of positive psychology in terms of benefits to our well-being but actually what this particular research by Kurtz in 2015 found is that um, the impact of mindful photography is similar uh, on mood and uh, appreciation of the moment and motivation to do things as doing those gratitudes as, uh, as counting our blessings but actually it can be a more enjoyable activity to do for people so try it out see what you think and again let me know let me know so I'm going to take you to my contact details um and then again, if you've got any questions, I'll answer them. And then I've got a couple of um, resources to share with you as well. Um, but you can get in touch with me via Twitter at Frederica underscore R. That's my personal account. Or you can also get in touch with me via the EduFlourish account so at EduFlourish, which is the Educate Flourish Twitter page. And uh, you can email me fred at educate to flourish dot org dot UK. And I would really love to hear from you. Let me know how you're getting on with my mindful photography let me know how you are and let me know um what um what your key your signature strengths are if you do the via uh, it's it's a really interesting activity to do so twitter at frederica underscore r or at eduflourish and uh email fred at educatorflourish.org.uk i'll come back to that at the very end um now i'm going to see if there's any more of those um, they're still tired and happy on the uh, on the emotional temperature so i'm going to take you to a couple of resources that i want to share with you so just bear with me um so a couple of people have shared resources with me so hopefully here we go right you should see that now so this is from um the lovely laura martin who's also also a mapster uh, so also somebody with an msc in applied positive psychology and she has this wonderful website improve my well-being and um she's put this resource together i mean i'm, I'm very flattered she's actually put educate to flourish on there and um a link to this well-being wednesday and also to a worksheet of uh, seven well-being activities for young children and also to my podcast for flourishing sake but she's got loads and loads of brilliant resources there that she has uh, curated into one place um, you might recognize head space for meditation so there's some great stuff there um, that you can link through and also the brilliant well-being toolkit the weekly well-being toolkit by Andrew Cowley and um, 
Kelly Hannigan, who um, I, I mentioned uh, their, their brilliant resource last week on this on this uh, live session. So that's that one. And also another fantastic resource. It's a, a small newsletter. Um, and this one is by Emily Graves. And uh, it's brilliant. Uh, so there's some really good activities there, a family um time capsule there's a, a video there to help us there's a um, action for happiness calendar for coping uh, lots and lots of great things brilliant resources and even I, I was fascinated by this cards against humanity have brought out a family edition that's not coming out until the autumn but they've actually created a free printable version now of the family edition that we can play with our kids how amazing is that um so you can actually um see that one i hope you can actually see that on your screen um and i'm going to stop the share now but i'll also put the links to those uh into the description of this particular video as well in the replay so you'll be able to get all of the links um and uh, and find all the information that i've been sharing with you uh so hopefully that's been useful oh hello laura <laughs> got a comment there um, thank you so much. So Laura is saying, lovely activity. I run a kids photography club and use this with them. They especially like looking back on their pics and sharing what they meant to them. Thank you so much for sharing that, Laura. And thank you so much for your brilliant resource as well from your blog. Um, it is a brilliant activity. I've done it with adults when I was teaching on the positive education module, and uh, we really enjoyed doing that together. But yes, it's a really lovely activity to do with kids, and it works whether you are getting out and about for your walks or whether you are really confined to being at home depending on which country you live in so it's a brilliant activity to do and thank you so much for that feedback Laura um, it'll be great to hear from uh, others how how you've used that activity if you've already done it if you've done it after today and how it's gone and who you've done it with and of course you can tweet me the photos you can email the photos I'd love to hear from you so before I go I'm just going to very quickly share my contact details with you again and uh, where are we uh, slideshow that's the one okay so you can send me your photos from your mindful photography you can let me know your signature strengths you can just ask me any questions send me links to resources that I can share this time next week on Wellbeing Wednesday and you can do that on Twitter at Frederica underscore R and you can do it at EduFlourish which is the Educate to Flourish Twitter account. Do please follow both, uh, it'd be great to have you on there and of course if any comments, any questions, any resources you want to share and any photos that you want to share from your mindful photography activities I would love to see those and you can also email me at fred at educate to flourish dot org dot uk. So that's pretty much it. We're at 27 minutes. Um, unless you have any more questions, uh, I'm just going to have a quick look to see if there's any more on the um, emotional temperature. No, we're still where we were. So no point sharing that again. Um, I'll just put my contact details up again um, but other than that um, I look forward to hearing from you thank you so much for joining me and I will be back same time next week four o'clock UK time on Wednesday next week uh, for Wellbeing Wednesday and um, have a wonderful week in the meantime oh and also um, follow me on Twitter at Frederica R and get all the details for my Friday night uh, live silent disco, which I run on Facebook Live on my Happiness Speaker page. So all the details will be going up on my Twitter account over the next couple of days. It's every Friday night at eight o'clock and we have a fantastic time. You bring your own music. Um, you you can, don't have to have it on headphones because everybody's muted. Uh, we do it via Zoom. You, you register, you get a Zoom link, and then you dance your heart away um, uh, on to your own music. We're all on screen together, all sharing, um, dancing to our own music, and we stream it live on Facebook so other people can join in that way as well uh, that perhaps are too shy to be on camera but want to join in. So have a wonderful week. Hopefully see a few of you in my um, live silent disco friday at eight o'clock uk time and in any case i look forward to seeing you next week for another well-being wednesday right here on youtube at educate to flourish bye